When Steel Talks, everybody listens. This is When Steel Talks, and we are taking the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Pelham Goddard while he is in Brooklyn, New York, before he leaves in a few short days to return to Trinidad. And welcome to One Steel Talks once more, Pelham. <coughs> Very it's good to it's always a pleasure to connect with you. You. <laughs> you know, and we always want to know what Pelham Goddard is up to, because there's just so much more to you outside of the Panama season. So give us an idea as to what major projects you are involved in at the moment. Well, um, right now I'm preparing, um, I'll call it, we go back home to do the QRC Foundation um, Jazz <coughs> jazz Festival. They say they're having a competition. That's new, that hasn't been... Very new. Yeah, and, the, the um, competitive element of it. Is, yeah. um, it's like it, they call it a Ramaji. Well, you know, Exodus had a Ramaji mm -hmm. and all that. So, um, but they bring it in like eight, you could play eight with eight panists or eight pan people, mm -hmm. including rhythm, and add um, conventional instruments onto it. Mm. You know, like, so, um, some of my people might come with a sax, a trumpet, you could go with a violin if you want, trombone, you know, mm -hmm. and the instruments. And even voids. So you're involved in this in terms of um, Exodus's entry into it. Yeah. So right now, as I've uh, up here when they told me that um, they were having that, I've been doing music and emailing it back home for them to practice. So more or less, they. So when I go home now, I'll put the whole thing uh, uh, package together and you know, and present it. That is one part of me. Second, next part of me is that. Um, Californians have already started their tunes for 2012. Yeah, because we got something from Carl I did from Car Wash, Wash, I did yeah. um, Dr. Wilby. Um, and then that is the next, the one part. And then um, I do in the process of producing a Christmas CD. Ah, this is Pelham's Christmas CD? Uh, yeah, um, last nice. time I had a Christmas CD was back in 19. 98 or 99. So this is so overdue. Yeah. What, are we, overdue. what can we expect from your Christmas CD? Um, who's appearing on it? Well, um, up to now is myself and Natalie York. So right? Um, to, when I go, I'll be bringing some um, cultural people, some Marak, some Latin parang stuff. Any pan involved? And will it be uh, synthetic or are we going um, I, I I'll just in a, a, a few sprinkling of pan. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> we're looking sprinkles. for something that is definitely going to be uh, memorable and look forward yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the last. CD I had for Christmas, it was a, a, a major hit. I had, um, what do you say, getting sober, and it was humorous and all that, you know? So that, that lived with the people for a while, and it's time to do a new one. Okay. Um, let's touch on Panorama for a bit, and we're looking both at the Trinidad and the New York Panoramas. The When Steel Talks uh, forum, or the discussion board, is usually quite busy with different members giving their views as to what they see uh, impacts the overall panorama uh, landscape, if you will, from the quality of the quote-unquote pan songs that might be available to choose mm -hmm. from, uh, th the adjudication of uh, the panoramas itself, and of course the quality of arrangements that have been forthcoming over the years. What are your thoughts basically on that? Well. Um you see the whole pan situation with panorama it starts with the calypsonians the composers i mean you know in the, in the production line we don't have no major um producers or or companies who produce records so a guy will just make up a song and say you have a pan song and go to a studio and produce it right he put it up there and um and you have a lot of people doing that kind of thing and um, all up in May or, or June before prior to Panorama you got to, to compose your songs. Um, first, in that line, I think about um, composers be more creative kind of thing. You know, like you don't take your first idea and you have all this time to think about changing a bar, changing a note, changing a line, getting the lyrics, you know, and it become a kind of have a pantheon. It's a hustle kind of situation, mm -hmm. right? So that one line, you need to 
take time to do these tunes. When they come to the producer now, they go to the producer or the arranger and the producer has to put them in a key that's suitable for their voice. You tell them, you're right, <laughs> they're singing too low. Um, I had that with car wash, yes. I, I tell them he's singing too low, too much low notes in the melody. Um, when you think about the pan, you're making a pan song, you're not a pan player, so most of them, right? So you don't know how the pan will the, um, decide or the pan, I shouldn't say the pan decide, but how the pan will take your melody in terms of range, mm -hmm. right? So they sing on a key that not to um conducive. conducive to the tenor pan range mm -hmm. and all that so they sung too low and then you have to go and transpose the song and all that but i will always say a pan song is a pan is a song if you want to say it's a pan song a pan song is a song created for the pan range of the pan mm -hmm. you understand so yeah. the singer will sing in the range of the tenor if you want you know if you want the tenor second pan to lead the second pan lead or whoever you want to lead. So that is that is it starts with this. It starts with the, the, the composition. Right? The producer produces the songs and um puts the begin. You can't produce you can't have one song on the market. So you have to find a compilation situation. Mm -hmm. Right? People like Alvin Daniel have a compilation of songs, he might have eighteen songs or whatever. And he launched that. And then when he is he launched, he invites all the, the arrangers, Artists. all the steel bands and all them to hear the songs and they choose. Right? So that is the, the first institution of having pan music play for panorama. Right? Um sometimes there's a, a, a thing about you choose the wrong song. It have a better song than that. It have a you know, everybody mm -hmm. having doubts of whatever happened. Who the band should go with, yeah. Yeah. So um we go through that whole process every year. Mm -hmm. And and I will always say um in no sense in in September you're choosing a panorama too. A panorama happens quite in February. Right? It will take you only about two or three weeks to really arrange and produce a in no sense starting a tune, a panorama tune in October. And and um then by the time you're going through the Christmas, all the Christmas atmosphere is here. Um, when January comes, the tents open, the atmosphere of people going to the tent, change, going to a party. Yeah. Now carnival atmosphere now sort of creeping, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the best time to really choose and, and get a vibe of panorama. So what about the adjudication process? What are your thoughts on that in general? No, in, in general, um, there's a lot of people who really could judge pan and all that and just music pussy right but some of them don't like to come forward so pan and bugle have a problem of of choosing people who want to come forward to judge now is a situation where first you will say pan people should judge right then on the other end now you could say um people who have a degree or have some kind of degree could win music could judge right but um i just obviously creating this music that we just do for panorama or steel bar music is a creation of somebody just hearing a, a situation of, of of let's say an idea first thing you have to have is the idea how you develop your idea into the right and um somebody who really have a degree or something like that they mightn't be practical mm -hmm. so to speak in how you play or how your chords suit you you know so it, it creates a problem on that side of it and then it creates a problem on the on the pan man as a judge on the side of it between um the pan man is a is a favorite of, of a band mm -hmm. or so you know what i mean <laughs> So oh, it is our argument, right? Yeah. Right with our argument. So um, the best way to look about that is to um, do take on the judges. You do your thing. You got your your um, your your your, your um, scores, and they get your comments. 
And they might have who like you, who give you 90 or 91 or those. And they might have who give you 74 and 85 and all that. And have you stretching out your neck to, to reach 91. Well, it's interesting you brought up mm -hmm. that because um, in terms of don't take on the scores that much, that's also something that people consider that might or probably does impact on arranging. Mm -hmm. Is it that wanting to adhere to the criteria that would be most beneficial to the best score is that stifling the creativity of uh, the arrangers themselves you see what 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 is the wanting to, is that wanting to stick to rules more I say apart from the rules right if you're doing one song if both of us doing the same song both of us will have the same idea of doing the same song you understand but that doesn't mean to say that your idea will be good you understand who is there to say that, um, all right, we should have more guitar pan parts in this shooting part? Mm -hmm. Or we should have a better bass line in this part here? Or we should have chords, the second part, play chords in the introduction? Or we should have, you know, whatever you feel to do in an arrangement of any sort is your idea to do it. You understand? And then in the case of uh, uh, how you voice your, your, your orchestra, that thing, however you want to voice your orchestra, you do it. In, in, bra in, uh, is in my next end of, or uh, next part of the music, right? However Roy Cape want to play, it might be how Charlie Roots want to play. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm He might have three trumpets and two trombone, I might have one trumpet and you know, mm -hmm. and we play different and we play different and we arrange the same tunes, mm -hmm. maybe different, you know. So, um, that was a competition to this, this end up with judges and in the first case, I think what happened with Pan is too much judging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we judge everything. If we had to go and play in a a simple thing like a, 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 a block of rama, <laughs> right? It's and they put three game. bands, they still play better than who? <laughs> this one play better than, this one was better than all stars, all stars were thing. Um, this one was better than that one. And it's always a better, 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 better. And that will cause the whole prolong of pan. That nobody don't respect it in a sense where uh, um, promoters will say, all right, I want Desperados to play and I give them fifty thousand dollars to play. For them to get that fifty thousand dollars they have to win a competition to get that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and everything is a competition thing. Mm -hmm. And that was funny the whole they make pan as a whole competition. Mm -hmm. Right? And where in, in look um I looking at pan right through the world, you know, thanks to the pan on the <laughs> talk. That everybody is playing pan. Yeah. And then it no who win and who lose and who all of that, these people will take the pan, they will have the managers, they will have the producers, they will have the publishers mm -hmm. in the music, they will have everything to cover music as a as, as, as as thing and in the pan community we don't have that. All we have is a group of judges and a group of judges <laughs> and a group of judges <laughs> and we have to qualify and we have to win and we have to be better than all stars and we have to be better than this one. And that is what we have. What about the quality of arrangements these days? Well, I heard... You see what happening is because of judging again. <laughs> because of judging, a guy going to arrange a tune, right? And you, you hear them putting in all kind of stuff that have nothing to do with the tune. Somebody will come and tell them put in a Latin. Look, I, I was speaking with um Collis Eddie Collis he called me last week. I said Collis um I didn't see I didn't tear for carnival and I knew you by desperados and stuff and that and that you know. He said boy he says about ten people arrange that tune really you know everybody coming to tell us what to put in the tube. I felt a, <laughs> a guy following from quite a uh, down to where small I meet him in the mall and tell him Call us when you go in the yard tonight, put in um, Trini to the bone. In, because it's Trini playing. 
Well, that's interesting okay. because we, we've actually witnessed that firsthand um, yeah. at some point here in New York when we were recording a particular band. And mm -hmm. there was the pan tutor telling the arranger, you know, this is the part you put in here. Yeah. And he was actually directing the band and changing the arrangement while the arranger yeah. just stood by just looking. And that was incredible. So there's so many cooks. Yeah, the to what cooks for <laughs> Yeah, that is, that is, that is what yeah. that happened in Pan Arrangement. Mm -hmm. So you hear a steel band playing. <laughs> and the arrangement start, they start good and all kind of thing, and then you hear them start to go off to all kind of different. So we talking dunk, quali dunk, 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 So we talking dunk. quality control. Where is the role of the band manager in this case? I mean, it's one thing you hire an arranger or two arrangers if it's a a joint process, and you expect them to, in their best judgment, deliver a product. Where or whose responsibility is it to draw the line to say uh, it's okay, thank you, appreciate your input? But still, common sense or musicality. Uh, we have a problem place. in music in general. It do not happen in Panalo. In the whole production of music, they do no. They do respect, hardly respect, at the arranger or the producer. The producer. Right? They come to the studio, <laughs> and when they producing the same pan songs, they they hire you to arrange, but they sing telling you what to put in the song. And I tell them, look, when the song <laughs> play on the radio once, and they then play again, don't blame me because you want to put in that. <laughs> you understand? So they come to the panyard, everybody want to tell you. And let me give you an egg joke again. I do a song named Happy Song of Time. And a guy came to the panyard, and everybody excited at this guy. Tell him, so and so want to see you. So and so want to see you. Who did want to see me? But when I so I saw the guy. He said, Pelham, um, in Happy Song, the name of the song is Happy Song. But you don't make a stop in the song. And everybody go, ha 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 So that's the level of oh. people coming to tell you what to put in. You're doing a song named Trini, right? You had to put in the national anthem. You want to put in Parang in it. You want to put in everything that is Trini. You want to put in African drums. You know, put in, you understand what I mean? Yeah. And then, apart from everything, you end up losing the main team of the song and you mustn't lose the main team of the song. So any who puts their foot it. down? Nobody puts their foot well, down. Well, then that seems to be the problem. To, if they figure, well, if you don't do that and they lose because they tell you to do that and they didn't do it. Well, and they, everybody wants it to win. So you have a quality and an authority control issue. In pan, in pan put in, as I say, in steel band, it's still win. It's not to lose, it's still win. Mm. Right? And everybody had to win. So, everybody say, um, Well, um, I find me strumming too long on the, on the culture. Um, you had to give me some fire, you know. And, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, this seems to be an, an, an ongoing issue. Let's hope that... Um, you know, comments like this and observations rather mm. are noted and maybe kept in mind the next time that sort of scenario um, mm. occurs in, especially in the more high profile bands, both in, of course, Trinidad and Tobago and in New York. Let's talk a bit about uh, Pat Bishop, who passed away yeah. uh, August 20th, and that was just. Yeah, that was, that, not, well, that, that is a loss, the, the, the whole. Uh, Indescribable. You know, I see in pa Pat. Come to the pan yard, sit down with a cowbell and I tell you, and she wait until I say, all right, Pat, good night, Pat, whole band tell her that, and then she tell them what she's going to do to the night. You're going to take bar by bar, note by note, and she start there punging, her, hitting her cowbell and going through these phases every, well, she don't come every night, but when she's there, the whole attention of Pat sitting down there. The yard is quiet. quiet. Yeah. <laughs> the mm -hmm. yard is quiet. She engendered respect. Right. It's like and they go. Mm -hmm. Well, next year we will have that. So I don't know. Um, we have, might have some more noise. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I mean, I so, personally always thought that she would have made a fantastic panorama judge. She was yeah. just such a very, very hard and Fear, no, she don't. Uh, judge, um, she don't like the judging part. She may not have liked it, but 
it was just a, she, a, a, um, a strictness and We did knowledge. some things already to her. Um, the last time we were going to a festival. And we did it sometime in Panorama too, because um, she now they, they just come to judge in the Panyard. But, but for the last mm -hmm. three or four years, because they haven't had enough bands to make a preliminary and a semi-final, mm -hmm. right? We want to know where we at. So we might bring our own people, mm -hmm. put them the other panel, and let them give us some point marks. Now. And uh, we did that with a festival piece that I did a two named Roman, and, and we did that and, and all that. But part herself, she will get the people, but she will not want to judge her part. She will be like to analyze the whole situation with the party. Mm. Right? And she go through all these um, sections. Imagine a section will have to play the whole tree from top to bottom by itself. Mm -hmm. Right? Perfection. When she hear anything, she stop them. She, and she says, why? This is the next thing too. I'm glad to bring up this. You see the thing about drilling? A lot of people in the pan between, like I said, they could drill bands and all that. Right? Pan people too, eh? Um, they could drill a band, they could stop. When you're drilling a band and you stop the band, you have to tell them why you stop the band. You stop the band because at that bar, 289, or the bar that goes so on, so on. They didn't play it as a roll before they hit, or it's a crescendo before it hit, or it's a this and that before it. It are people that drill band, pan people feel everybody can drill a band, they stop, hit the band, they start back again and they keep mm -hmm. doing the same thing to the band over. Same with no thing. corrections. Mm -hmm. Right? They are able to explain them musically too. Mm -hmm. Right? About why you stop. And he used the musical terms and all that kind of thing. And fortunate enough that Exodus understand that situation because we got a lot of festivals that have that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. When you're doing festival music, because of the music is to play to the score, accurate to the score. So the score have all the dynamic situations. So the other people will know all of that. Because we went through it and we go through it and all that. So, um, Pat, the Lord Pat, I know what will happen next year. Well, he's that hoping that the amount of years of discipline yeah. that she instilled, and that that she does continues. go, she yeah. might leave Exodus and go the same night and go by Desperados and drill that private band, mm -hmm. you know, and go through the same kind of phase, you know. You. Mr. Pelham Goddard, your name is synonymous with some of the greatest compositions and arrangements for Caribbean music over the years. Mm -hmm. We only have to look at some of the work with David Rudder. Yeah. It just immediately comes to mind as to what the legacy is in terms of your contribution to music. People will sing that and it just evokes everything still. Now, more or less a lot of the music not every single selection of course that is written they tend to be maybe less memorable and don't make such of an impact which is fairly sad when you think of um, what music can be what are your thoughts on that as to why has this really happened as the years have you know gone on and why is there such a paucity of memorable and uh, really uh, beautiful music um, with David, with the days of David Rudd and Charlie Juice, that when we was producing in, in a, um, let's say in a, um, a studio like K Studios, yeah, was more, no, it was not digital studio at the time, and we were overdubbing people and, and, um, and then we went into the studio with computerized situations and all that. Um, the compositions too, some of the, uh, like I did Sparrow, um, what are the first with Sparrow Boy, um, the, the big, the band plays on, 
and play my music and all that, right? Um, those were good comp uh, compositions also. Um, good news with, um, with Roger George, Happy Song and all that. But the situation of training, that what Trinidad get in the, as it with more radio stations, right? And more people choosing music now. And the whole situation of the young people music came mm -hmm. in. So it was a, it get like a complete, like pe the young people now want to hear the Marshall Montanos and the this and that. Some of his stuff so, is pretty good. And then when we, they wasn't playing much of the tunes, I call her um, a radio personnel. Say, well, um, we drop our CD on the radio station and so on. He said, yes, yeah, that pan tune, we get the pan tune. And they, they will start to label the music okay. into a pan situation, pan tune situation. And now they look at Pelham Goddard as a pan man mm -hmm. and producing pan, pan tunes, right? And um, not many more, not, not many of those kind of things will, um, will play because I had to play all the rest of music for Carnival and stuff. But, um, But in terms of composition, I always search for melodies, good mm -hmm. melodies, right? And it seems as though those are not the, 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 the good melodies now will fall by the roadside because mm -hmm. it's too much, maybe it's too hard on the ears of the people, <laughs> right? So they will take a simpler melody, like I heard some. <laughs> Some tunes that that they are on on when still talk that started go like um, simpler melodies, no big set of um, chords and and movements and so on, right? And it's then the, the because of not getting your play, Pelango that say well look, um, I don't feel like producing no tunes again. I will go with whatever the radio play, mm. right? And I just listening now <laughs> to what you would know, really play. Hmm. But the tunes that we put out before with David, as you say, um, The Hammer, uh, Madness, Rally of the West Indies. Classics, which is, right. which is um, what's in focus. Yeah. Right, Song for Lonely Soul, um, The Engine Room, and all these kind of tunes. Hmm. So these were well taught about productions mm -hmm. happen. You know that? Beautiful. So essentially we're looking at a focus more on uh quality again. Yeah, I I will I will go for quality. quality I go, last yeah. I produced a tune with rather two years ago named um Pan Pan in the Mass. Put yes. some Pan in the Mass. Put some Pan in the Mass. Right. Nice. And I when they throw us out of Panorama <laughs> and a fella put her in the papers, he threw they really don't want to pan in the mass. They make a little a thing on, on a, um, a little cartoon. And <laughs> see the chop along with that pan. No, we want to pan in the mass. Mm -hmm. So that alone will show you. Because um, we had to. Uh, and um, I produced um, a tune, Festival Time. Mm -hmm. Now hear this. I Festival Time. I say, I wonder who could sing this song, boy. I feel I could use, um, I would like to say use. I think I could work with Q Canal. Mm -hmm. Right? When they learned them, excited, delighted, the first time they're singing a band tune again. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> first time they're singing a band tune. And I can't mm -hmm. done good, right? Semi finals. He went down real, real thing. You know, me was what one point or two point behind phase two, and to see that same year, that when my mother died in February, the same year that semi final, that my mother was in a draw by Clark and Batu. Hmm. because we are going on bury her the, the next day, right? Um, and when for the carnival final, final now after the. The fiasco with counting and mm -hmm. over among mm -hmm. the people and all that kind of thing. I went and do an interview. Here the interview. How come 
you use how come you use a group that is a rap show group to sing a pan tune oh, yes, that? questions <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh they yeah, like when we played um max it up mm-hmm. how come you take a soca singer to sing song a pan tune. <laughs> and come as a pan tune to come panorama with and the same soca singer now Singing all the pan Pantins, songs. Yeah. <laughs> Destro really loves. She Destro loves. Gosh, yeah. She loves pan. Right. She loves pan music. Yeah. When we did it, oh, we take a soca singer song, max it up. They laugh at me, and they give us so much. Pre- we had to come from almost thirteen to make the to come fourth in the final, right? And then. The next year, the show was, she was no soccer singer again. She had a team more band, you know, again, colors, mm-hmm. all of that. Okay? So, they, that's how they look at it. It looks as if they really need to put everybody in a box by which they can understand by means of their limited yeah. understanding of what music actually can be. And that seems to be what is in play mm-hmm. um, when the uh, categorization comes in and it seems to permeate. Uh, maybe even like through society, adjudication just seems to flow down. Yeah, um, you see, as I said before, the carnival really, or the, the, the pan situations really start with an ordinary guy. Nobody don't send nobody in a studio to do no pan song. Mm-hmm. A band a person feel you have a, a, a good song called Pelham. I have a tune here, boy, for Exodus. And I feel it's only you could do it. I say, all right, let me hear it. I come and hear it when you want the producer and everything. Right? But nobody, and it's interesting that Pants and Bigo assigned nobody to do no band songs. Yeah, or these right. carnival songs, or carnival mm-hmm. or whatever. The thing about Trainer that makes Trainer so good that everybody know carnival come in and they make the tunes. Because, like, if you know Christmas come in, you go and buy your curtains. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, indeed. Right. So no, so everybody on their own situation here, yeah, right? They produce their music and they put it out there for carnival, right? But the situation of the pa- same pantheon, I, be, me, I, I might get criticized to say this. They should take a little more time to uh, compose in this work. Mm-hmm. You understand? A little more time composing. You don't have to rush it in, in into the studio in, and into the studio and do it. And try to get out of the gate. And try to get out of the gate. And if and producer you go to. Yeah. And then and next thing to to produce a song, you might want brass, you might want guitar, you might want vocals, you might want everything in it. So it costs money. So you go by a studio that don't have to do all of that. Right? Mm-hmm. They don't want no brass, they can do the synthesizer or whatever. And they go in a cheap studio and, and do their work. The person who produces anything might not be experienced of producing or arranging or music or nothing. And they put it out there and it will play. Mm-hmm. Look, I see, I, I was t- um, telling somebody last week, oh, same quality, quality. I told him, we came up, we had the opportunity to hear Sparrow, Kitchener, Terra, in the Pantin, Kobo Jack, mm-hmm. um, Ellie Manet, all of these kind of things, Uri Holman, all these kind of great people we know. It had to be something that we learn from them. Mm-hmm. You understand? And we, they had a standard of doing, in, in doing the things. They had no one to do it. But people and so do you. Huh? And so do you. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't don't sell yourself short. <laughs> so yeah. it is it, a standard you have to live with. Mm-hmm. You understand? It's not it's not um thing, it's one hard to know before I went to play any music at all in any band. I didn't know how to play my piano by mm-hmm. ear though. Mm-hmm. Right? I didn't know all my chords mm-hmm. and everything. You had the basics down. Huh? You had your basics down. All my basics mm-hmm. were down. So when I went in a band to play, I was just sitting down by that keyboard playing. Mm-hmm. What they sit to play. Right? I didn't go to play no pan. I went to lime in a solid pan yard 
and because of my abilities in the music, I end up playing bass and solid. And they, they were so amazed that I played bass to keep me out of panorama mm -hmm. and give me a fetch to play in for pre carnival fetch and all that kind of thing. I played for two years with Sally. Right? But I had all my basics down already. Mm -hmm. Right? But the situation with you hearing most of these pan songs coming out, they have no introduction, they don't know how to start the introduction, they have no the chord progression then good, right? The, most of the time the fellas might be singing out a key. All of these things that have to mm -hmm. think of consideration of producing a tune. Well, let's hope in that case that um, the season is not really quite started yet. Here's hoping that some of those uh, observations are taken into concern. Before we wrap up, let me just take the time to ask you, do you have a name for your upcoming Christmas release yet? No, I do have a name for okay. it. Okay, so, so you're looking. I'll go and christen it when I go. All right. Um, this is a good time. Let me just ask you, what is your favorite piece of music that you have worked on, you've composed? That I composed? I think um, Roman. Hmm. I, I don't even forget that Roman, the last festival piece that we did. Okay. Uh, was the 11 minutes night, um, over 11 minutes of music. Mm. that I created from scratch. And that has been okay. what stays, what's most memorable with you over the years. Yeah, um, I think Calypso music by Rada. As well, but it's between Calypso music and Roman, two yeah. different. Thank you, that's it. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank you, okay. as always, for taking the time to bring us up to date as yeah. to what's going on um, in your life musically and uh, your outlook on the steel band art form in general. Thank you very much. Okay, thank Happy you. Good Wednesday Talks. Yeah, yeah. Keep up the great work. Okay, <laughs> Wednesday Talks. Everybody listens. Yes.